Hey, my friends, this is The Art of Prepping. Hope you guys are doing great today. Um, I have some good news. Um, the issues that I've had with YouTube and my channel have been resolved as of just a few minutes ago. So I just want to share it with you because I know a lot of effort has been made on the part of a lot of you guys. Um, I know for a fact that you guys went out of your way to watch a great number of my videos during this past month just to keep the channel alive. And I really want to thank you for that. Um, together, even though the channel wasn't being recommended on anyone's feeds and everything was kind of shut down on that side, um, the channel wasn't being advertised at all. And of course, I was completely demonetized. We actually had like over 50,000 minutes of view time in February. So that's pretty awesome. And that was because I know for a fact that you guys went out of your way to watch a bunch of videos. And thank you for that, because you allowed me to keep my stats up to a point that they couldn't deny my appeal just on the basis of my numbers. So you guys kept the channel alive. And so thank you very much again. And so going forward here, um, I just want to do kind of a fun video to celebrate. And I just kind of wanted to do uh, something that um, <laughs> that I enjoy talking about. You know that I'm into... Uh, pocket knives of all different types, but in particular, the really high value stuff um, or just stuff that's affordable or budget, but at least, you know, somewhat of a good quality stuff, you know, not junk, but just decent stuff. But uh, this one here, this particular product um, I've had for about 10 years, but I never carried this pocket knife and it was in the box when I found it. And so, uh, you know, the actual box that it came with. And so I was digging around in a, a location on the property that there's like uh, various old boxes that have things in there that I just store things in. And I was going through a box that had a bunch of camping gear and it had like uh, camping utensils and I think like a, a mess kit and just like a canteen and things like that. And there was this little box and it's this Smith & Wesson, uh, you know, standard pocket knife box. And I was like, huh, I, I wonder what's in there. I, I kind of just completely forgot about this knife, right? And then I was like, oh, I bought this like 10 years ago. And this is the Smith & Wesson uh, model SWLPS. And this is part of their 24-7 series. And now I did a little bit of research. I couldn't really get a definitive answer on this. But this knife has been in production, at least this particular model of knife for at least 13 years. I thought that was pretty interesting. So yeah, I got mine for like just under $10 10 years ago. And uh, I looked it up on Amazon and they're still selling them. And they're only like $12.99. So about $13. And so I'm going to put a link in the, uh, the comment section if you just want to check it out. But yeah, for about 13 bucks, this ain't that bad. So pretty cool. I'm just surprised it's still around. And it's a it's a pretty small knife, but it's not like a micro knife. You know, it's not so small that you'd want to put it on a keychain, for example. Um, but it's um, it's just really a nice, compact little pocket knife. And so I just kind of want to do like an overview here just for fun. And um, I took some pictures, uh, as you know, you probably can see. Um, excuse the less than stellar quality of the you know, images. Um, at the time of doing this particular video, it's dark outside and there's rain. And so I just um, took some pictures indoors the best I could. But at least you can get a kind of an idea of what the knife looks like. And uh, so first off here... In the closed position, it's three and seven eighths of an inch. So it's not that big, but it's like, once again, it's not like really, really small. And uh, for some people, they kind of like that size of around four inches closed because um, it's just not something that's going to be like, you know, dipping really deep in the pocket, you know, or taking up a bunch of space. And this is a question that I really have. If you just happen to know this, let me know or let us know, is the steel type. So it's using a stainless steel. I remember that much from 10 years ago. But when you go online, it's just like there is no answer. At least I couldn't find any kind of real answer to this. So it's a stainless steel. And if I had a guess, at this particular time when they were making Smith & Wesson pocket knives, they were mostly using 440 stainless steel. 
Now, I don't really know if it's 440A or 440B or 440C. I, uh, I don't really know. Um, it does seem to be on, a, on, the, on the softer side. So I'm kind of thinking maybe not 440C. It could be, though. But anyways, let's just call it 440 stainless steel. And a lot, a lot of times when you see just 440 stainless steel, that means 440A. But uh, I'm just saying it could just be any of those. Now, this is a, um, a drop point. The, the blade uh, design is a, or the styling is, is a drop point. And the blade is about roughly two and three-fourths of an inch. So, I mean, it's not that bad. You know, for an EDC knife, it's really a, a pretty great size. It's almost like the optimum size. And so the blade here has a slight recurve. If you kind of look at it, you kind of see that there's, it's, it's not that pronounced, but it's there. And it kind of like, um, I mean, even the serrations are part of that recurve, which is kind of cool in a way, you know. Uh, this knife, though, does have uh, quite a bit of uh, serrations for the, the blade. You know, it's, it's not exactly or right on half serrations, but it's just under half of the length of the blade has serrations. And the, the serrations are actually pretty good. You know, this combo edge is, is good because the serrations aren't overdone like you see on some knives. Let's just be honest. Some serrations are just cut way too deep. They, they get hung up on whatever you're cutting. And this one is actually um, not too shallow, but it's just deep enough to kind of grab on and, you know, kind of rip. You know, that's kind of what serrations do anyways. They help to kind of rip, you know, material, especially fibrous material. So for like uh, cutting rope and things, this is like a pretty good uh, design for that, of course. And so, um, yeah, slight recurve, a decent um, layout for the combo edge. The detent is really good on this. I mean, it's a satisfying click. You can literally hear the little ball bearing going into the, the detent. I mean, it's it's cool, the little detent hole there. So um, very good, uh, nice and secure when, you know, when you're in the closed position. Uh, it's very smooth to open. Um, I didn't even put any oil on it yet. In fact, I need to do that. But it's so smooth, you would have thought that it was well oiled. And so I took a little look in there and it, and it looks like it's for sure some kind of like a, a nylon washers in there. That's what it looks like. Um, the blade has a black Teflon coating. And, uh, you know, just overall, it's just nice to look at. It's not too shiny, but it's not matte either. It's kind of in between. And I, I did take a, a ceramic rod and just kind of touch up the edge. There felt like there was like a small burr on one of the, um, the serrations. And um, I just kind of wanted to clean up the edge. And it cleaned up really easy. And it's like, it's just really sharp. Both the the fine edge portion and the serrations. It's just overall, it, it didn't take much effort. So once again, the, the blade steel must be on a little bit more on the, the softer side. Which you would kind of expect for this price point. Now, it does have ambidextrous uh, thumb studs. Uh, the weight from the best that I could find online was about 2.6 ounces. And in my hands, it does feel like that's probably just right on. I do have a scale, but it's kind of buried in a box. So I apologize. But I would say about 2.6 ounces is, is probably about the range. Uh, I mean, that's, that's about right, you know. So it does have some good jimping. And I mean, actually, it's like better than the average jimping you would definitely find on a thirteen dollar knife this is something that you would find like on a fifty dollar knife it has some just it's just a little bit sharper and it's just really clean serrations they're small serrations but they're just in the right spot for your thumb and so that is awesome it has black aluminum uh, handle scales and it also has black rubber inlays so i mean there's actually a lot of grip to this little booger yeah i was kind of surprised it does have stainless steel liners and they're kind of like coated with um i guess i don't know exactly it didn't really specify it could be more of that black teflon but everything is blacked out in particular even the hardware um, when it comes down to it though the pocket clip may not be like you know for a lot of people the optimum position um it does have that uh that tip down right side only kind of uh, approach and uh 
I'm not the biggest fan of that, but it's not bad because the way they have it, they have just enough space above the pocket clip to put your, um, you know, your index finger and your thumb and to pull it out. And I'm not against deep carry pocket clips, but sometimes they're a little difficult to retrieve, like the, the knife, you know, to be, you know, retrieved out of the pocket. And so what you see with this, it just gives you just enough real estate there on the on the, uh, the the tip of um, of the scales to just pull it out. And so it still sits in there pretty deep, but it gives you a little bit of something to grab onto. So the pocket clips may not be like in the, the optimum position. I kind of prefer tip up instead of tip down, but um, it, it does work. I mean, I didn't really have any problems when I just started to carry it today. And that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm going to carry this in part of my rotation. Um, this is not really what you would consider like you know, a knife that you would want to go around and brag about, you know, <laughs> or something that you would want to carry every day. But, you know, maybe like once a month, I'm going to try to carry this and uh, and just enjoy it, you know. And so when we look at the handle here in closing, um, it's an open pillar construction. So if you do have like a lot of lint in your pockets, like I sometimes do, um, that'll kind of like kind of pass through the handle instead of getting stuck there and accumulate and then you have you know issues and obstructions with the blade when you try to close it so open pillar construction and uh, i'm just kind of looking at the uh, the knife right here in real time and uh, there is no lanyard hole so if that is a a must then you might not like this but a knife this small though uh, a lot of times you're not even looking for a lanyard hole you know at least i don't if it's if it's a really small knife or a smaller knife but yeah, overall, it's just compact, it's lightweight, it's really affordable, and I think it's kind of cool. It's just a little unique, you know, it's in particular that drop point blade with a small or slight recurve, and the serrations are done right. I think it's cool, you know, it has a grippy handle material. Overall, I think that this could qualify as a high value budget knife, so... So what do you think about this? Is this what you would consider junk or would this be something that you would consider? Uh, just let me know in the comment section. Once again, I just want to thank everyone for your support. Uh, we are now back on track and I will catch you later.